How's it going, people? Welcome to Pacific Hackers yet again. All right. So another month and How about now? Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. All right. Awesome. Cool. So again, welcome everyone to, to the uh, this month's meeting, uh, meetup. Uh, we're happy to have you here in person, and I think we have like twenty five people in, in online. So thank you for the ones over there. <laughs> and uh, well, so there has been a lot of things happening throughout the month, and we're gonna discuss uh, that. Um, but uh, first, I, I just want to mention, so I think I see a lot of new faces, John, I met you, what is your name? Ivan. Ivan, uh, what, what are you? Marco. Oh, okay. Nice to, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Andrea, I'm a student of... Uh, oh, okay, awesome, Andrea. Uh, Roman. Roman? Yeah. Lenin is here, and then he brought uh, his girlfriend, so welcome. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, for the, the ones who don't know, we, this is the meetup, Pacific Hackers meetup. We meet every month. We start meeting here back in um, December of last year, and uh, they've been very generous to us to, to sponsor, you know, the, the place to, so, so we can gather. Uh, we used to do it at the um, uh, Martin Luther King Library in downtown San Jose, but due to COVID and restrictions and politics, they, we, you know, we can go back there. Uh, but they were very generous to, to, to sponsor this place. So, you know, I wanna thank uh, Maker Nexus you know, sponsor of the place. And uh, so we're gonna continue being here, you know, throughout the year, unless something changes, we'll notify it through the, uh, the meetup page. Welcome. Hello. Hi, how are you? I just find a, a space and have a seat. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so, um, you know, so besides the, the meetup, we're, we also have a site thing going on and, and we actually became a nonprofit 501c3 nonprofit organization and it's called Pacific Hackers Association. And basically we're taking this to the next level because you know it's good that we gather and we share ideas and stuff like that but it's also the time to reach out to um to other people and stuff like that hey man how are you have a seat um so yeah so that's um our main purpose is basically you know we well we welcome everyone we try to help uh you know the the ones in need right so we uh we try to help parents and underrepresented communities you know to get into this field and you know so since we're starting we, we launched this back in august of last year uh since this is very new not you know we don't have a lot of members yet uh but we have so far we have a successful su success story and uh, it's actually on our youtube channel uh we're gonna promote it in the next few weeks but um you know there's a few ways you can help us obviously we have a i don't know if you can scroll to the right uh it's actually to the left no? Yeah, keep going. We have to fix that. But there is a donate button. You know. <laughs> I know it's hiding, you know, and that's probably why we haven't get any donations, right? Because it's not into it, right? So, anyways, uh, we have a donate button where you can actually help, uh, you know, you know, monetary. But then also, there's other ways you can help us, right? So obviously, students, we're not expecting you to pay, and and this, by the way, we're not gonna charge you or anything like that. But the way you can you know help us is by spreading the word if you know someone who who, who wants to get into the field regardless of honestly the race doesn't matter uh where you came from or, or anything your status just just send it our way you know we're gonna take them to to the level of eventually they're gonna get to, to get a job in cybersecurity. that's our goal right so um so one way is obviously donate with money to spread the word and you know, and, and tell your 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 companies so you're already working for a company and they have a, a donation uh, match or something like that. You know, you can do it that way. You know, where you can they can, you know, you can donate something they they match it and stuff like that. So um, I mean, again, there's many ways you can do it, or or just uh, um, any type of donation. Um, you know, equipment, anything like you know like that. Well, we we always welcome that as well. So. 
uh, again, want to throw that in there so you know uh, who we are, what we're trying to achieve, and where we're going, right? So that's that's for that. And then, uh, so let's uh, go ahead and click on the uh, um, this. Yeah. So Alan, you know, it was very generous to share a, a link on the uh, Meetup uh, comments. And if you haven't, uh, just go to meetup.com Pacific Hackers and you will see the comment there. Um, so Alan, you know, mentioned something that I think we should talk about and it's about the Conti, you know, the Conti group, right? So I think uh, uh, this has opened the eyes for everybody uh, in at all levels, because I think from the higher up perspective, I think, they see all security people as they're lunatics. They just want money. They just want this and that. But there, there's actually no, no cyber crime out there, you know, or or it's not going to happen to me. Or or only big corporations are in danger, you know. Small corporate, you know, small businesses are not, and that's not true. And and the county leaks prove us that, you know, there. This is an or uh, not uh, an organization that is <laughs> very well organized. There's documentation to do the uh, um, uh, exploits and stuff like that. It's very well written, even better than you know, like some schools that they you know they have actually like education stuff like that. You know, they doesn't even show how powerful they can be in terms of making the you know uh, uh, an impact, negative impact to, to companies, right? So again, uh, I, I will recommend you to 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 read this um, article, which is again it's posted. Actually, I don't know if you can post it in the. Uh, in the chat here, um, but yeah, so um, yeah, so if, if you haven't read about it, go ahead and read it, and also um, look for Brian Krebs, uh, and he has, uh, I think, I don't remember if he made two or part two or part three on 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 his uh, article about it, but basically he went over every single thing that it was exposed. And you will be surprised and you'll be like, wow, really, they're, they're that bad, you know? So if you don't know what Conti was, again, it was a Russian group when the, uh, the Russia um, invade Ukraine, one of the members was Ukrainian. I'm just giving you the, the, the summary in, like, in, in a nutshell. Uh, one Ukrainian member was against that. So he disgruntledly uh, decided to, to steal all the information and publish it you know, to the world. And, and that, you know, that was a, a big eye opener because um, again, uh, we can see how powerful they are and, and how much impact they were able to do. So again, um, if you haven't read it, uh, my advice is to go ahead and read it. It's, it's awesome. So, yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, what we have next? We have a 15 minute presentation. Okay. All right. So we're gonna... All right, so we're gonna have a 15 minute presentation on how to Google better. And then, uh, so today, let's put it this way. We have a lot of good information to this, but we're gonna have uh, Irving, one of our own Irving, uh, giving a presentation on, on network uh, uh, analysis using Wireshark. Uh, we also have the, uh, I believe it's Google Dorky, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then also we have the, uh, the, the light talk about uh, how to Google better, which I think, I don't know how much different it is, but you know, the floor is yours. So welcome. And again, for the, the ones that made it here, uh, you know, thank you so much for coming. Um, things are opening more, so but still be safe. You know, follow the uh, procedures and everything. And uh, yeah, we'll get that going. So uh, what what um, Zoom Zoom username are you? Uh, Come here. <laughs> All right, the floor is your guys. Hey, um, you are on Zoom. You are. Oh, you just said hi. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm gonna make you co-host. Oh, can you make uh, the one that's just the the one that starts with zero nine? Can you make that co-host, please. There you go. So now you should be able to share screen. Yeah. Share. There. And you can share whatever you want to share. Why is it a... Oh, have you not shared screen before? 
So I think I have not just seen on this. Right. We join the meeting then. Okay. Uh, what do we need to do? Uh, we just hit that. Reopen. Uh, rejoin Zoom. Okay. You know, as always, technical difficulties. Uh, what's the meeting ID? The meeting ID. What's the meeting ID? Uh, nine three six eight oh five one seven six six five. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yeah, zero one zero. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, can you make this person a um, co host, please? The one that starts with zero 09. Yeah, I did. Oh, nope. I had to rejoin the Zoom meeting. Oh. There you go. Thank you. Now you can share wow. that specific thing. Okay. And uh, uh, sure. Oh. Move this over. There you go. We see you. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter. Hey, everyone. Um, we see something different. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to go on the top and do a switch. Uh, uh, oh, uh, screen. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Well, it's not like technical. Okay, uh, so I'm in presentation mode. Uh, Do you have notes? Yeah, I do. I do have notes. Oh. Um, can you can I share the link with you? Oh, yeah, we got it. Yeah, he has notes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll try to figure it out. Okay. Um, hey everyone, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, first time here. Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk about how to Google better. Uh, it's mostly aimed for people who are starting in cybersecurity, like myself. Um, not really for like, I guess it's for everyone. Yeah. Um, so, how to find answers faster. So, a little bit about me. My name is Warren. Uh, my background I'm an alumni from 42 Silicon Valley, it's a software engineering school. Um, there, it's a basically project based. There's no hand holding. Uh, it's self paced, open twenty four seven. But the school shut down last year, uh, end of last year. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. Yeah, uh, yeah I know. Uh, he can keep going. Um, I have uh, experience as a Python backend engineer, a uh, little bit for Android mobile dev and Flutter engineer for a few startups. Uh, but nothing like too major, just like very like junior slash internship type of thing, and, uh, volunteer work. Um, currently doing some IT work. I'm studying for software engineering and IT, and I'm taking an Urban's course on Security Plus. So uh, what are we going to talk about? Uh, tips and tricks on Googling better. So what is Googling? Uh, I can't see my notes, so I will try to remember stuff. Um, Recording in progress. Oh, was there? Uh, is there somebody's mic connected? Probably. Yes. Are you, are yours? Uh, yeah. Is yours in? Uh, no, I haven't joined the audio. Hold on. Hold on. You're going to leave the meeting? Yeah. Okay. Oh, because Zoom is such a wonderful tool. Oh, 
Make, uh, yeah, just make, make me a co-host in a sec. Okay. Oh, wait, that's point. Can, ah. can I share this? Yeah. Okay, uh, it's fine. Everyone sees my face. No big deal. Um, so what is uh, Googling? So it's uh, searching for information about someone or something on the internet using the search engine Google. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, via google.com. So, so how does Google search work? Um, so Google, the engine, um, crawls and indexes uh, websites, and they serve various results depending on uh, your profile, unless you use like an anonymous profile. Um, it's like not as personalized to your account. So crawling is um, when Google searches the web with automated programs called crawlers. And they're looking for pages that are new or updated on the web. Um, and Google stores these, stores these URLs in a big list or database or several. Um, so you can look at them later. Um, there are many ways to look at these. Uh, uh, there are many ways to crawl, but um, how they do it uh, is kind of like secret. Um, and the way they crawl is they go, they send, I just probably send like um, some code to visit URLs, and then they go within each URL that's inside of this URL, and then they collect all the information on that web page, links, con content, all the text, and whatever's on there, they store it, and then they make this like huge graph or like, and just add it to like their databases. And then what they do is they index all this information um, and they try to analyze what each page is about. Um, uh, they analyze everything, try to understand it. Uh, and the information stored is in something called a Google index. Uh, and they serve uh, all the results when uh, everyday people like you and I or whoever um, uses their search engine so when and where? Um, so nowadays, there's a lot of devices, right? Like everyone has like a laptop, cell phone, smartwatch, smart TV, et cetera. Um, and most IoT devices come with uh, a browser built in. And if not, it's, uh, there's also some way where it connects to the web. So, so why should we Google better? Um, so it's, it's to save you time and um, save you effort, actually. Um, so how this came about was uh, the other day, I was helping a classmate in our Security Plus class on a quiz. And I was working with my classmate, John. And I noticed um, the Googling for the answer was a uh, very like apps.com style, if anyone remembers that. Uh, apps.com was this. Um, different uh, search engine a couple years earlier than uh, Google, where you just ask a question and it would try to find answers for you uh, based on your question. But uh, Astacom was very hit or miss because, uh, you know, early days of search. Uh, it is what it is. I think it's kind of still alive for some reason. Not sure. Um, let's see. Uh, so present day, there are like tons and tons of search engines like Bing, DuckDuckGo, Yahoo, but today I'm only kind of mainly focused on Google. Um, so the way Google works, uh, less is more. You're using their database or index and crawl website information to find uh, the top results or the best results their uh, machine learning, AI, and algorithms um, think are relevant to you and based on other people's uh, similar searches. Um, but uh, the way you search and how you search really affects your results. Um, so a quick example is like, uh, let's say um, you're going for a, a job interview. You go in, you, want to, you can talk about your entire life, but you know, it's gonna take a long time. Uh, a better way would just to be giving a summary, a 30 second uh, elevator pitch by yourself. So you're like clear, concise to the point and um, if, you need more information to 
you know, if you need to give up more information, you can just add more, and that that's um, more efficient than like just saying you know, about your entire life, etc. Okay, so I have seven main tips on how to Google better. Um, so definitely keep it simple. Um, narrow down your keywords and be very specific. Uh, use important words um, only. Be as descriptive as you can in fewer words because Google search uses uh, keywords mostly to search um, the thing you're looking for. And if you're looking for like a PDF image, video or some type of file. Uh, it could be a username or password, you know, for uh, uh, educational purposes. And maybe a web page or someone's email, et cetera. Um, uh, number two, you should gradually add search terms. Um, so uh, I'll have an example later and I can explain that a little better. But um, definitely uh, less is more. Um, Number the third one, sometimes when you arrange your search terms in a different order, uh, it affects your search results. Um, so I recommend playing around with your search order. Uh, I personally haven't had too much um, trouble with this, but I was reading on the articles uh, for this presentation that uh, sometimes it actually does. Um, the fourth one, uh, don't include your answer in your search. Um, let's see how to explain this. Uh, so if you kind of know what you're looking for, but you're not looking for something uh, about that exact thing, um, it, can, it can kind of throw off uh, the search engine. Uh, I don't have the example at this for this right now, um, but it's it's kind of like. Uh, redundant in a way. Uh, I do apologize, this is a very rushed presentation. Uh, uh, five, you can actually exclude uh, sites, words, and et cetera in your search with a minus sign. So when you're searching for something, you put, um, let's say, Pacific Hackers uh, Warren. So you, you don't want to search for Warren, you put uh, the minus sign in my name, and you could exclude uh, Topics like that from your search. So it's kind of like not quite cool. Uh, six. Um, so Google search, uh, uh, as everyone has uh, hopefully done, um, when you go to google.com and you're searching for stuff, you can, there's uh, certain tabs they have there that are like uh, images, videos, shopping, textbooks, and et cetera. So everything's already cat pre categorized. So you don't really have to search as hard and you might get better results. Uh, and seven, there's an advanced uh, search feature where you can change different change uh, different constraints and use uh, your like uh, range of filters, uh, like time, uh, uh, in URL, uh, in title. It's just a uh, um, little like uh, bells and whistles that comes with the search engine for you to refine your search. And it uh, saves you a lot of time. Uh, but it does take a lot of practice. And some of them I didn't know I'll mention also later. Uh, one cool thing you can actually do, I didn't know this, you can view uh, public webcams um, that are out there. It's kind of interesting what uh, you can do with Google. Okay, next. Okay, I will briefly mention this um, because uh, the presentation isn't uh, focused on Google dorking, in, uh, but it's more like Googling in general. So uh, Google dorking is a hacking technique that makes use of Google's advanced uh, search services to locate valuable data, uh, data or hard to find content. Uh, it's also known as Google hacking. Uh, you can find a whole bunch of Google search, a uh, bunch of stuff in Google search. Uh, let's say uh, you're in cybersecurity and you want to find things like usernames, passwords, emails, numbers, files, servers, and databases, SSH keys, API keys, environment variables, and et cetera. Um, if someone's put it out there, it's probably out there. So uh, uh, we hear a lot about buddies uh, 
cybersecurity hacks from different groups, from like big companies, small companies, it goes into the news. And it's because someone misconfigured their, um, their API keys, right? They put it into their GitHub or some, uh, they put their passwords in like a plain text file. We can just read passwords one, two, three, four, five, six, or they don't change your passwords. Um, things can be looked up. Things are available to the public. Uh, so uh, my recommendation is uh, definitely try to uh, limit what you put out there and um, definitely uh, be more wary about the information you shared and learn uh, cybersecurity best practices. Um, how much time do we have? A couple minutes. A couple minutes, okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a live demo, um, but because it's live, no guarantees uh, how good the results will be. So uh, my first example uh, that I encountered uh, a couple days ago was um, trying to figure out what Pacific Hackers was because uh, this is the first time I've ever been here and ever heard of Pacific Hackers, Pacific Hackers. And I didn't know what it was. Uh, I didn't know it was like a media group, an online group, um, maybe like club or something. So I was searching and then I went to some really weird websites. It, it wasn't this location, it was some other place. Um, but I'll, I'll search and we'll see uh, what the results show. Um, but because uh, we're on this profile tab, I'm gonna go incognito. So my searches aren't um, personalized to my profile, but more of like a general person to make it more uh, inclusive to everyone's general searches. <laughs> Let's go to google.com. And uh, to uh, reiterate from what I mentioned earlier, I was hoping my uh, classmate, John, um, we were trying to figure out this quiz, uh, but then we didn't know um, how to Google super efficiently. Uh, it does take a lot of practice. Um, and then things uh, I was encountering with my classmate and also on my search for Pacific hackers uh, was I, or we, we use like very broad uh, searching uh, things. So like, what is Pacific Hackers? Uh, oh crap, it has my, okay. <laughs> I already visited them. I don't know why my incognito showed me the visit pages. Um, so, Right away, because we already know the topic we're looking for, um, we were able to find uh, the Pacific Hackers uh, website. Um, and I actually, actually don't know if pacifichackers.org and phack is the same thing. Uh, let's find out, because I have not clicked on the website. Okay, so, so the comments, so one is the um, nonprofit and the other one is the page for the conference. Oh, okay. Two, two different ones. So, so different ones, but the same place. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't know that. So, like, I, I looked it up the other day, and I was like, eh, why? So good yeah. question, though. Good yeah, question. so that it kind of you know, throws off your searches. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look, quick look at it. So, this uh, Pacific Hackers Association, uh, like I mentioned, the nonprofit. Yeah, and then, and you know, for me personally, coming here to speed up, like. Oh, is this, this is what I'm looking for? So I, I kept searching. So let's go back to the uh, browser and then our uh, uh, search engine. And the next one says phacks. So what is phacks.org? So let me click this. Oh, it looks very similar to the last one. Um, and it was talking about like summer camp um, and some other things. And it hasn't been updated since last year. Um, so I was, I was looking around on all these like different uh, web links and tabs, like schedule to figure out like, oh, is this gonna uh, be in person or something for tomorrow's uh, presentation? And I, I looked here, there's, there's things from 2019. I was like, is this, is this correct, you know? So I went back and I searched up 
uh, I remembered seeing uh, Irvin's um, Discord channel mentioning about something about Meetup. I'm like, okay, um, to go back on what I mentioned earlier, uh, I think it was gradually add terms to make your search uh, more defined. So I can look up Pacific Hackers Meetup. And the first result is uh, uh, meetup.com Pacific Hackers. And I was like, okay, what is this? Maybe this is a different result. And I found here. Um, and I was, I was looking through the web page, and I wasn't really sure if this was the one, but I remember uh, Irvin telling me uh, tomorrow or today, uh, 26, Saturday, 1 p.m. So I clicked this one, and I scrolled down, and I saw Irvin's name on there. And I was like, okay, this is probably it. I signed up for the, the meetup, and here we are. Yeah. Um, let's see. How, how long did I talk? Uh, it's 42, so a minute or so. A minute or so. Minute or so? Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, quickly, I'm gonna mention the fun things you can do with uh, Googling or slash Google dorking. Um, uh, some things uh, that I kind of do, but also didn't know about. Um, so you can do pronunciations. You can search like uh, how to uh, pronounce this word and it'll have like a uh, speaker icon where you can click it and it'll, it'll like sound out the words for you, which is pretty cool. You can look up definitions um, you can do something called reverse image search. Uh, it's really good in like cybersecurity or you just want to find like the origin of the image or if the image is real or whatever use case is. You do like drag and drop your image or you upload it and your Google search will find very similar results or you can use it to like confirm if the image is actually real, if it's been used before, someone else owns it, et cetera. But uh, you know, it's very limited to their engine, not the other engines. I think um, some uh, new ones I didn't know about. You can use the uh, or operator, like in uh, programming, like and and or. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I think you can uh, have it like filter your results more specifically. Um, and you can also search within the body title or URL, uh, for example, of certain websites. Uh, so that's very interesting. Um, you can also uh, find a patent. Uh, haven't used that either, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, the last one, or uh, let me mention some other ones first. The track packages, the time, weather, stock quotes, real time, your flight time, find out where things are streaming, like uh, Mr. Robot, the show, and it'll list all the major streaming websites you can use. Uh, you can create a Google alert, actually, to alert you of certain things that are uh, that show up in the news or articles or whatever shows up on their engine and someone tracks them. Uh, lastly, here's my contact information. Um, you can hit me up on Herman's Discord, you can search for Warren, or you can uh, email me at throwawayyourpast at gmail.com. Uh, and if you would like a copy of my presentation, I can send you a copy or I can post it somewhere. Um, uh, and also the last one is just question and the resources I got for this presentation. Um, but yeah, thanks for uh, having me for this talk. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Right. Any questions or anything? No? Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Are you ready to play? Yeah. yeah. So excited. <laughs> um, in your browser, make your way over to wireshark.baycyber.net. You stick this into the chat. Wireshark.baycyber.net.
there, you're there, you're there. Yeah, yeah. All one word. Wireshark.basecyber.net. Once you are there, you're gonna need to sign up. So click that little sign up button. Make a name that you'll remember only for today. Uh, email, it does not matter at all. You could use a goofy email that doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. Username, uh, definitely remember that. And password, remember that. Wireshark.basecyber.net. Once you've done all that, go ahead and sign in. And you'll be presented with something like this. This is where I need you all to be. Wireshark.basecyber.net, make your account. <clears throat> Again, I don't care what email you use. As long as you remember your username and password and you're able to log in, you're in good shape. Is everybody there? You uh, go to that website, yep. you make an account, yep. you sign in. Cool. You should be seeing something similar to what I have. Okay. Yeah, looking for the nodding heads. Cool. Um, this is our homegrown platform. On this side, you need to join a team. I know what we have this on team status, but it doesn't matter. If you want to play with other people, you can tell them the username or the, the team name and password that you make. If you want to play this by yourself, you make your own team. So if you want to make a team, click on the gear. How do I get to this? Yeah. If you missed it, it's on the, uh, what is that, right-hand side? Yeah, I see that. Then click on the little gear, and you can make a team. Yeah. Click on the little gear to make a team. If you are playing with somebody else, then one person needs to do that. The other person would click join team. It does not matter to me how you go about doing it, but I'm going to make my own team because I want to. And I'm going to make a password for myself. So, yay, I made a team. Waiting for everybody to be at that about the same spot. Uh, you have a question. I logged in, but how do I get the team? So, this is on the this is on the right-hand side, this bar. Oh, got it. And like I said, either you are making a team for yourself or you're going to be in a team with others. And if you're going to do that, then share the team name and password. Otherwise, make one yourself. Again, waiting for the nodding heads and or the good to goes. Still have an issue with Wireshark. Wireshark. Help them out. You need to click on this right here. And either make a team or join a team. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beats me. It does not matter. You can be all by yourself. You can be in the team. Same difference. Once you have made a team, you are able to see the challenges. This CTF is built for all levels. So if you've been at Wireshark for a while and you just want to go for it, go for it. 
pick uh, any of the categories. I want to stick in the beginner category. So I'll be presenting from that, but feel free to, to roam free and try all the others out. The other thing is no VNCs in front of you. Click connect. You will be greeted with a desktop. All the files you need are in the Wireshark CTF folder. That's right here on the desktop. Uh, so there's plenty of files to look around for. Yeah, don't worry about that one then. Troubleshooting. All right. We can fix permissions easy. Wireshark itself is under internet. So you have Wireshark there, plus uh, everything you need. All in the browser. Don't need to download anything. You didn't need to download. You didn't need to install Wireshark locally because it's all there. Makes life easier. So. Like I said, click on a, a category that you'd like. It'll tell you what file to open. Find it, open it, answer the question, submit the flag in here. If you get stuck at any time, just ask away. Here's a... Here's the first question from uh, the beginner category in network analysis. There is, in the beginner category, there's stuff to read. Uh, in all the other categories, it's just the question itself. So yeah, for anybody who's starting completely new, the beginner category would be for you. This is not meant to be a, a actual contest where we're pitting each other and racing to the top. This is all learning. So feel free to work together. As I always say in all my classes, I don't care about that kind of stuff. So feel free to work together to solve. Um, if you're stuck on a question, let me know. But I can very much uh, showcase some of the beginner categories, unless you guys just want to hit the road and hit those the, the questions on your own, go for it. So maybe we can go just okay. struggle together. Sure. So this very first one in the beginner category, mm -hmm. 1001. Yeah. The question at the bottom is the question for this. So it wants you to open a Wireshark download slow. Okay, I don't see where. Right here, open HTTP Wireshark download slow. Yeah, so in that analysis, We'll just scroll all the way down to uh, yeah. where to go. Wireshark download slow. There it is. So I double click this. Open with Wireshark. Use as the default, please. Ta da. So the question here is at what packet does the user request slash download that HTML? So we look here and I see in packet number 10, a get request for the home page. I can see that in hypertext transfer protocol, there is the get request for the home page. Well, if I'm looking as the question is asking me for the slash download, the easiest thing that I can do with Wireshark is open up hypertext transfer protocol as you see here, open up the get request, find the actual request method, 
right click that and say apply as a filter. That way it shows me only the packets that are get requests. Because there's 23,000 packets and I am not about to go through every single one. But I can apply as a filter selected. And instantly I get all the get requests. I just went from 23,000 to 74 in just that one click. So you can just scroll down and you'll find the get request for slash download. That packet number on the left side, that number is the answer to that question. So I'll repeat that one more time. I have the first question in the beginner category. It has me open up Wireshark download slow.pcap. The question is at what packet does the user request slash download.html? I open up that file, but I am not about to look through 23,000 on my own. That would be very stupid. I'm going to find the first get request that I see, which is asking for the home page. In the details pane, I have hypertext transfer protocol. I'm going to open that up. I have a get request here. I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to go to the actual section that is the get request. I'm going to right click that. And I'm going to apply it as a filter because the only thing I want to answer the question is the, the packet number for the get request to the download page. I don't need anything else. So I hit that. I instantly filter out of the 23,000 packets to just 74. Now it's just a matter of scrolling until I find download.html. And it is right there on that screen. We're looking at the answer is in the number column. Leftmost. So I will walk around and help anybody else who needs help. So Everything is happening is here. This is talking about that. The two things that you need for that question are opening this file from there. Yeah, and where is it? That's not a website, it's a file. So everything's in Wireshark CTF. And it's under net analysis. And you just scroll down to refine that specific file. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, you have the wrong one. Oh, you have 
One check download. It's a uh, one check download slow. Wrong file. Thank you. Yeah. Download slow. Yeah. That sounds like, wait a minute. Where are we? So we were looking, we got the challenge one. Yeah. So you copy this? No. Well, that's the file you want to open. So you can move this out of the way for now. This one? Yeah. Uh, you can minimize Wireshark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 All the files are in here. Go to the net analysis and then uh, find the HTTP download slow. Look! <laughs> yeah, that's the right one. So I find the first get request. Yes. That's the right packet. Now uh, open up it. I know, right? <laughs> And, and open up the get request. So now you see what it is request number get. So it's just yeah, so select so like that and apply it as a filter. So like that. that way you just look at only all the get requests, and now just by scrolling, you'll find the one that, that is the answer to the question. And then again, it's the number. Yeah. The number is the number of the packet is the answer to the question. What was the number of the the um shannon i would say use um uh ch mod to change permissions if you can't do that let me know i'll find a workaround Yeah, so just scroll all the way down, wire chart, and say, you know what, let's just be the default. Now that we're there, 
dig into the protocol yeah, itself. Here. Yep, double click it to open it. And uh, and dig into the get request itself. And now there's request method. So what I do is I right click that and then I apply it as a filter. That way it shows me only get requests. And then it's just a matter of scrolling because it's easier to scroll to 74 than it is 20,000. Right? So once I apply it, yeah, select. Success, yes. Overall, success. Good, good, good. Also, yeah, so they, they changed this. Now we have to look at the question again. What package are we using? Again, if you are already proficient. And we want to skip the beginner section and do other ones, go for it. I did see that permission issue, but I think with a CH mod, you can change that permission and you'll be good to go on any file. Because the bar turns green. Okay. So just find for that package again. Uh, but you think the answer is there. <laughs> so we have yeah. 74. Yeah. So. Oh, there you go. Cool. Right, move on. Yeah, so we need to get download. So just find the download. So just that down. Now, when you enter right the bar in the top that has exactly. the name of the challenge, it turns green. And then you can move Number on to the next package. Right now, double click on it. Um, let's go mm -hmm. back to the question and let's bring yeah, the answer. It's just flag. Yeah. 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 For the answer? Yeah, yeah it's weeks. just a number. It's just, it's just number for 29? Yes. So was it, it wasn't that one then. Yeah, it's 29. It's 14? Yeah. It, it, it's well, go back to the question. Now, are you looking at this or are you looking at the question? Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Yeah. The bar turned green. You got it right. Uh, okay. So, so you, it's that number. Yeah, that was the answer. So now you can close that question and open up the next one. And then, can I just click on it? Yeah. All right. So then the next one. Let's roll. Up. <laughs> there you go. Kind of similar. You open up a different, uh, different file. Let's scroll down. Mm -hmm. Let's, the question is open VLAN channel to capital. What VLAN is it? Let's go to the network. Let's go back. Go there. Let's get out of there. Let's go to the beginner category. Uh, the other ones don't have that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a lot, so just go there. 
But again, this is not a race. Right? It's not a race to see who's the best at it. This is just a learning experience. So that's why it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's pretty much the still motivation, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, see, green is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. If you don't know, the bathrooms are straight across. So I think there's, well, last time I came, I think there was two. Yeah. 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 Uh, that one say, didn't say it was for kids. Say? Yeah, oh, okay. didn't say. Oh, okay. Um, Good thing I didn't. I think that was for that event. Maybe, yeah. Was that last week? Are we able to ask outside of Yeah. It'll just get reset every day. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I am watching the chat every now and then, folks who are online. So if you have a question, feel free to type it in there. Marco's also watching it. Yes. And then we try to find it. That's where we find it. And there is a network. Network analysis. Okay. And for challenge, challenges, there we go. Beginner, we'll be done great. The network analysis, we have to find the. Um, yes, we have to find the. Um, yeah, let's just find for this one. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. How long will our accounts persist after we log out? They will persist until I reset this game for another event. Yeah. 
if you feel like using your local Wireshark over the, the browser instance, I put the link in the chat. It's in uh, Chapel University. If you want to download the file, it's the they range anything from a gig to two gigs. Or I think this is the smallest one. Um, but you can download these. It, it all the pa uh, all the package user files come or package user PCAP files, the the workbook one hundred and one troubleshooting and the big book. Okay, so you can click on the supplemental pages. For example, if I click on this guy, there is a supplement, one and a half gigs to download. So these are, these are all been pre-downloaded on that instance that you're using, but if you feel like you wanna use your local Wireshark instead, that's, that, that would be the way to go, so download those, those supplemental files and open it up locally. So you could you could do it either way. Um, I just go to, I just searched Wireshark books, and you find the Chapel University link. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's the place. So if you want to do it locally. You just have to download the files. If you want to just not download anything and use everything from your browser, it's all there for you. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's this question. Either way, you use the same files to answer the questions. So you're not, you're not wrong with the way you go. Tier one, need more info. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question. Yeah. You're trying to find. You did you open up VLAN general? What would be on this end here? Yes. Yes, you did. Okay. So I I showed you exactly where the answer is. Just right click. Right click on this one. Uh -huh. Just right click it. Those those green boxes are hiding the the actual answer. That's why I, that's why I spoke to you. I selected it. for what for that one. Or... Is that what the inst what I wrote to do? So I didn't say to do that. I just said look at frame one. Right, look at eight hundred two dot one Q section, mm -hmm. which is right there, the third, mm -hmm. and that'll tell you. See those boxes. That's where the answer is lying. Oh. Okay, so. Sometimes you don't got to overthink it. Okay. 
So we have this one, ID 0, ID 32, so that is 32. That is which question? Ah, this one? I'm looking at download bad. HTTP download bad. And I want to know the time between uh, packets. Oh, what is the initial round trip time? Oh, that's easy. Packet one is the beginning of the of the capture, so it has all zeros. So how long did it take packet two to show up? Oh, got it. So just the one below? Yeah. <laughs> yes. OK. Right, sometimes don't overthink it. The one that follows it, though, uh, 2002, mm -hmm. is the same question, but asking packets nine and 10. Yeah. So. Uh, you don't need to use a calculator because Wireshark does it for you. So for example, if you go to uh, packet two, let's say we wanted to know the difference in time between packets two and three, you would right click packet number two and set time reference. So rather than busting out a calculator and doing what is 16, seven, five, five, six minus that, I can just set it as the time reference. And now we find that packet three happened that many milliseconds from packet two. And when you're done, you can always right click and set unset and everything restores. Uh, let's see, going back to the chat. I'm having trouble with, uh, 113. Uh, where'd it go? One thirteen. How many milliseconds did it take to download this file when the GET request was made in packet 561? I'm not sure how to tell when the packet finished downloading. Uh, that is download slow. Why is shark download slow? So first of all, we got to get to packet 561. There it is. Right, there is the request for that file. The easiest way that we can figure this out is by following the stream. That way we ignore everything else except this conversation. We have this pop-up of, of the stream itself. That's cute. But we can follow the same exact thing that I just did of right-clicking this and setting the time and then scroll to the bottom and see how long it took at the end. 
Does that make sense, Eileen? Cool. Yeah, sure. Which question? <laughs> this is all pre set. It's going to come out. Yeah, for sure. It's in the Wireshark CTF folder. Under net analysis. For okay. that so question. everything is going to come under that in that file. Yes, for that hey. question. <laughs> so we're we're going to get back to that. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, so I get that. <laughs> All right. So we don't care about that. That's just talking about a response from a get request. You make a get request, you get a 200 OK. That's, that's the response. That. I mean, to me, that's a question. That's not the question. The question is out the bottom. Okay, so that's what Patrick's question to say now. Yeah, would be 10. Because on packet 10, it's because of the home page. See that they get and then just the backslash? That's the home page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm using packet 10 well, as question. my yeah. jumping point. Since that is a valid get request, I can, uh, you can go back. I guess I could just get time values. Because that, that packet is a get request, and we are looking for a get request, when the user is requesting download that HTML, we can filter by get request alone to get our answer. Okay. Yeah. So, so the easiest way so is to just over, you can, but you can also use Wireshark to make the filter for you. HTTP. That's why I have everybody open up hypertext transfer protocol in the packet details pane. Open this. Yep. That's what I just did. Got that. Just to so then uh, open up the get request itself. And now there's request method. Okay. Yeah. So I can. So I would right click that. Right. So. And apply that as a filter. Coming from the server from client packets. One in selected. Selected. Look what it says here. Time. Let's do that again. So right click to the get request. No. Oh, that big number. Right here, the actual yeah. request back one six which is seven further down, and you remember back to one. So we go here, yeah, back to a plane, that's right, and apply the filter to a plane, select it. One six seven. Hey, now you have just the get request, and now it's just a matter of scrolling until you see the one where here, here, here. 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 <laughs> and now you can find the one that has downloaded HTML. <laughs> how can I sort for that? And that would go in this part. So now, you could if you wanted, or you could just scroll down. You only have 74 to look through, which is way better than looking at the 23,000. Yeah. In here. Why does it show the HTTP OK packet in the conversation? Wait, poorly worded. I'll ask again later. Okay. So we go back there and we're going to look through the HTTP. We call it slow bump. That's what it called us. All right. Okay, slow bump. There, open that. Open with the uh, uh, get in the pack. So we need to get a uh, we need to get a uh, find the get to find the answer. Let's go down to get. 
On the other side, it's incorrect. It must be the difference. Yeah, I think you have. Maybe it also. So, is there MSS? Is that both the field? MSS as a field? Yeah. There, there's a field for everything. Let me see from the back end what it's looking for. This from that. Yeah, that's what Is there any math involved for a number? <laughs> no. Is there any math involved to figure out the time? Well, I sure can do time for you. You can do time math. So because um, we have one time that starts and then time it ends. Yes. We need the difference. Yes. Okay, so we have to Wireshark does that for you. Does it for us? Does it for you? So we need to input. Mm -hmm. So here, that. that's what I showed earlier. Um, I'm just gonna open up this one just for kicks and giggles. If I wanted to see the difference between two and three, I'm not gonna bust out a calculator. Okay. This thing can do it for you. Just right click on the packet you want uh -huh. and set it as the time reference. Uh -huh. Immediately, it tells you how many seconds packet three came from packet two. Oh, okay. This, this is witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> that you're learning how to do. So. <laughs> Uh, what question was that? What number was it? Uh, oh, okay. You're right clicking? No, you're not right clicking. I hope not. What's what's not responding? The no, oh, this is okay. <laughs> Too many people. It's all about. Well, good thing is you can get the questions. Uh, the questions you can still get to the questions, and the the files you can get them from Wireshark from the Wireshark book site. But good to know because this this is actually the first time we're trying i'm trying this system with 20 plus 24 plus 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 whatever that number is 30 40 people now memory just hit 100 <laughs> percent that's all you know nothing good to know which is a good test for you, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I want to, I actually do want to take this platform to DEF CON 
So this is a good test to see a good stress test. And go, okay, it needs more RAM. Got to download more RAM. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Let me have your attention really quick. So I, I forgot to mention it on my introduction, but um, so we have a, a we're we're partnered with with um, the Dark Art Village uh, uh, at RSA. So uh, we are going to be at RSA. And we're going to be doing training. So if you have a talk, uh, I think do we have, no, we don't have any slots available for in person, right? Oh, no, we have plenty of slots for in person. In person? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we have online. Uh, we have, we have some on June 8th. If you want to submit a virtual talk, like a pre recorded talk, let us know. Yeah. If you want to speak in person, we have, we have 30 minute slots, a bunch of them to, that needs filling. So if you have a topic that you want to present at RSA at the Dark Arts Village, let us know. Yeah. The sooner the better, actually. Yeah. Um, two questions. Sure. Is there a link for that? And is the training free? You get a pass to RSA. So, so if you're yes. doing it in person, oh, so, okay. So first question, what was the first question? Is there a link? Uh, is there a link? Hi, no, you got, you the link is right here. <laughs> it's two physical links. So, so yes. My, Email me if, if you guys are interested in helping or, or, or presenting yourself. So let me, presenting let me, better. Let me, let me let me put it this way. This is a way for you to promote yourself. Okay. So because I'm not sure, but I think you can eventually send us a bio and a picture and they, they will post. You basically basically will have your name in the RSA page, right? Okay. okay. So but don't quote me on that. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're hoping it's gonna happen. Uh, no, so to answer your question, um, there is no link to sign up. The link is sending him or me an email, and uh, uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, we will put it in there. For the online talks, um, obviously it's going to be pre-recorded. What we ask is, whenever we put in the time frame that we put you in, be available for questions and answers. So even though you're not gonna not gonna be talking like live but people are gonna have questions. And then you potentially can, I don't know how that's actually gonna work, potentially can speak you know, to, for the questions or just type the questions. Right? I think it's then, gonna be typed. I think it's gonna yeah. be yeah, typed. It's a live response. Uh, if, if you are helping us in person, uh, you're going to get a, a RSA pass. And uh, I mean, that, that's what else you want. <laughs> <laughs> RSA is getting, I don't think they're doing the passes like they used to anymore. They're getting more like cheap and cheap. Yeah. So um, they changed uh, yesterday. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> yeah, they didn't have a free pass for expos and now they do. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, but you have to sign up early to get it. Okay. Well, here you go. Well, here's another way around. They're, they're... Yeah. So you can always, you know, if, if you know someone who, who already works with a vendor or, or or just Google online, you know, like uh, RSA, uh, free pass, you know, you'll find a lot of companies sponsoring them, but you know, there's always a cap, right? So if you sign up for like the first hundred or something, whatever, uh, that's how you get in. But uh, with us, our pass is a little bit different. So we will get you, I think it's not just the basic, it's a little bit like from the levels. So, um, You'll, you'll get some, something in return for sure for just helping, you know. And and, and the reason why, so let me let me talk about can, the can dark car one, Can you get one for just being a nice guy? Nah. 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 Uh, so the dark car, so, so villages uh, actually in, in RSA are called sandboxes. So the way you're gonna find this is under sandboxes. So you go RSA, um, look for under, do you have it online or no? The what? Oh, oh never mind. The uh, uh, Dark Arts Village? Yeah, yeah. If you want to just go to the RSA Dark Arts. Page. Oh, uh, you can, yeah, here you go. Yep, yeah, that one. The first one. Here you go. So, <laughs> We're so dark. Even the background's dark. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Actually, match. So, uh, <laughs> so this, those are the, the, the uh, sandboxes that are going to be in there. Now, villages, usually you find them at DEF CON. Uh, uh, or RSA or B sides or something like that, but in RSA they call it sandboxes. But Dark Arts is a it's a village that it's actually per, uh, participates in Black Hat and and Defcon, right? So uh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, 
uh, okay, so RSA this year, or because the newer CISOs are becoming, are more technical than the previous ones, they want to see more of the hands-on technical things, right? So this year, RSA is giving us the opportunity to make this RSA more technical, not just selling you a bunch of equipment and, and hope, hopefully you'll you know, configure them right so you prevent all the breaches. Uh, this year, we're actually gonna teach you how to use some of these things, right? Uh, so here's your opportunity to, to get yourself out there. Now, and is, is this going to be virtual or is it also in virtual? person? In, in person. In well, what, where at? At the Moscone Center in SF, okay. San Francisco. So uh, scroll up, I think. Do they have the whole thing this year? Uh, it's like two grand. Right. But if you speak and volunteer at the Dark Arts Village, you don't have to pay. <laughs> now, <laughs> we just not speak? <laughs> no, uh, you got to speak. Not. So um, okay. it's a two grand pass. Come on yeah. up. So if you actually click on convert passes because yeah. So the basic pass. So here, here I'm telling you this. So the basic pass. If you use, if you get it from a vendor or something like that, you will not be able to attend the. Uh, um, um, so actually scroll down because that's where it's going to tell you. Um, sandbox is there. So now I scroll up. So the uh, more. The expo and the digital will not give you um, uh, the, um, the sandbox. The sandboxes yeah. it's, it's, so you have to pay now 350 just to get in there and visit us because there are going to be people in there checking the badges and say, oh, you don't have the color, so you cannot, you don't belong here. Right? So um, well, you can get it with Expo Plus. Yes, right. That's right. what he's saying. Yeah, that's is you I'm can't saying. get it with Expo, Expo or digital. Plus, but you have to pay at least 325 right now yeah um until may 20, may yes. 6 and then it's going to increase if you want a full conference that means you're going to be able to look uh everywhere basically go everywhere yeah. right uh so yeah so if you need help with a topic idea that you want to present let us know yeah but like i said showing the expo is 50 bucks now the x was 50 bucks so um, it's going up it's going yesterday up. yesterday i got an email saying it was free if you sign up by a certain date. Oh, right. Yeah. So um, Expo in and of itself is great if you want to go t-shirt shopping. <laughs> yes. So so um, if you never attended RSA, let, let me, oh, actually, let, let, let's start there. How many have attended RSA? So not that, you know, half and half. Uh, for the ones that have not attended RSA, this, this conference is one of the biggest in the world, but it's meant for executives who are actually budgeting for, you know, how much I'm gonna give you for to buy your toys, you know, security. So it's it's a combination of both, but it's uh, it's meant for um, uh, those executives who are gonna be signing up those uh, checks. Uh, in, all in, the in, in the past, it's filled Moscone Center, all four right. projects. Yeah, so they- that, uh, That's big. Yes. So they have over 2,000 vendors. Um, so that's when he said uh, uh, t-shirt shopping, it's not really shopping because you go, every single booth that you go in, you know, they try to talk to you for like five minutes and then you get a, a free t-shirt, right? So by the end of the day or the three or four days that you attend, you'll get like bags of t-shirts. So actually all the t-shirts that I use, I personally use are, T-shirts from, from RSA, <laughs> and that's I've been accumulating from for the last five years. Um, so yeah, I don't have to buy a, you know T-shirt. So it's good. Also, if you're interested in how a product works, they they have their demo section. Each company shows you a, a demo of whatever product. So let's say um, uh, like Wireshark, for example, it's a, it's a free tool, right? But there's also other commercial ones that you know they literally do the uh, the work for you. You just have to literally like check boxes and gives you all that. There's, you know, tools out there, but they cost, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want, you're interested in packet analysis with using those type of tools, then, um, you know, look at the, uh, the list, see who, which company is that, and, you know, reserve some time for yourself to go there, right? So um, what you're not gonna see um, is the, the technical aspect of things.
like you're not gonna learn something new, although you're gonna learn how a product is used. So it's just gonna learn how a vendor works from a product perspective, but not really from the basics of like cybersecurity and stuff like that. But that paints you the big picture when eventually you become a secure analyst or a CISO or whatever the case is uh, to see what you're getting into, right? You know, how many technologies out, out there? And, and then also how many of those companies are actually work to, to buy, right? Not all of them, you know, fortunately, I mean, that's the game, right? Some of them are very cheap. Some of them are cheap and good. Some of them are really good and very expensive. So that's when you start like thinking yourself like, almost like as a homework, you know, if I have a budget of $100,000, how much can I get? You know, how much can I buy to secure my environment? And that's where you use RSA to go and look what's out there and just kind of like do it as a homework, you know, uh, okay, I'm gonna give 20,000 to this company, you know, 50 to this company and 30 to this other company. That's it, you know, you spend uh, 100,000 in three products, which 100,000, it's, it's actually, you know, probably half of one product, but I'm just giving you as an example. Anyways, uh, the information is out there. If you wanna attend for uh, uh, free, I, I suggest to Google Expo Passes, uh, but that's gonna give you some scope down uh, on this one it's not really going to give you much right so the 51 dollar one that's just going to give you whatever it's on the on the on the on this one right uh, if you want to attend the uh, the sandboxes which that's where we are going to be then you have to get the 300 dollar one the 325 one so you have to pay right now or until may 26 Otherwise, it's gonna go up to like 500, 700, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Same thing with um, full conference. I mean, if your company can pay you, you know, might as well, you know. But if 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 you don't, then just, you know, find a way to do it. Right, you have a question? No, I'm sure. Right, mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, well, you mentioned that it's more of an executive than a you know, first mm -hmm. conference. So, what kind of audience do you get at the sandbox sessions? What kind of target audience you're trying to educate them. So again, uh, the previous sandboxes were um, like, uh, go back to the other sandboxes. You just have to go back there. So like, for, ex for example, the, uh, uh, and they change every year, right? But they try to be more of a, um, um, try to be more hands-on. Hands-on, technical. So like, you know, executives, can see hand, uh, uh, you know, what their analysts are actually doing, right? So it's almost like coming here and learn something that is hands-on. So now explain, try to explain to your boss, right? You know, oh, I went to this week and I went to Pacific Hackers and learned this, okay? Uh, he's just gonna listen to it. It's like, okay, that sounds fun, but how can I see it? Well, either he comes here to learn about it or he goes and pay, you know, big bucks do RSA and basically learn the same thing. You know, obviously the talks there are gonna be more like a little bit more advanced, you know, intermediate to advanced, but it's it's because this is the first year we're doing it. We're trying to make it of, um, so executives can see the real, like almost when I mentioned about the country leaks, you know, they didn't believe that these organizations like criminals exist. Oh, we're just making this up, you know. Uh, Conti or, you know, Anonymous or others, you know, they're just a bunch of, you know, like us, you know, just getting together and hack for fun. No, these are organizations who are actually doing, you know, to do harm. So, uh, but, you know, they show proof. So this is a proof to them that, oh, I really need to spend my money because if I'm in the uh, IoT, you know, field, well, here's a sandbox for just for IoT devices, right? Um, aerospace if you enter the aerospace uh, industry well what do you need to learn about aerospace so i can put my money into it so if you look in every single one of them they are targeted for a specific one ours the dark arts it's general you know here's an exploit this is how an exploit looks this is how you can potentially your 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 company get harmed you know and stuff like that this is if you don't invest in this right now. Now, now 
we're showing you like a proof of concept so you can actually go back to the floor, talk to whatever vendor is selling that particular item so you can secure your environment, right? So that's the whole purpose. So this year, that's why they're trying to make it more technical. So then the past CISOs who don't, don't have any technical background can learn about it. And the current CISOs or the newer CISOs that are getting more technical can actually have fun and learn something new, right? So it's, it's a combination of both. So any other questions? So yeah, if you're interested, uh, uh, Actually, I'll, I'll put it on the chat, but it, otherwise, Marco at pacifichackers.org or Irvin at pacifichackers.org, send us a um, email and say, I have a potential talk. Uh, what do you think? Um, I will say right now, it's a good time to submit your talk because we have a lot of uh, open slots, but towards the end, like late May, um, you know, if, you know, probably we're gonna be uh, putting things on uh, people on waiting lists because, you know, uh, it's gonna be full by then. So you can actually coach us through yes. what we'd be saying, oh, yeah. how to present it. Yeah, well, and we're not Thank throwing you. you on the deep end and going, good luck. <laughs> okay. No, we're just saying this is a great moment. This is a great opportunity to get your face in front of people, yeah. to, to talk to tech. And yes, of course, we're going to help you through. We just need to know who's interested and help you through uh, uh, what you're going to talk about and get the slots all filled. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So right now, what we're doing is we're putting, so it's actually, we have really decided, or, or the person who we're working with, uh, we have not really decided on the topic, on, on, the, uh, on the details per se, but what we're doing is right now we're putting everybody like on a, on a list and we're going to say, oh, this person is, is talking about this by then if there is a talk that it has more relevance to what we're doing we might have to like obviously cancel and stuff like that but it's better if you put your name now because we, we can say well all these people already like put their name out there like two or three months in advance you know it's not going to be fair for them to kick them out i mean unless like i said the uh your talk is not really like suitable for what we're trying to do or anything like that then we might have to talk about it, but uh, honestly, I don't think that's going to be the case. Yeah. And we, I think we're, you're fine. we're trying to give the opportunity to everyone, you know, yeah. to give a talk, right? So, you know, so they can get yourself out. Yeah. There, I, guess. I have a few questions. Um, sure. How, how like, detailed the talk has to be compared to like, what I did today? It would, like, it would need to be more detailed. Okay. Uh, how, how long would the talk have to be? How long? 30 minutes. It is now like I'm doing a few talks and they're they're gonna be hands-on stuff. So I'm not really talking for 30 minutes. Okay. It's so more like talking hours. talking for a bit and then letting people work, talking for a bit, letting people work type of thing. Yeah. How truthful do we have to be on the RSA conference registration? Like I just got it today. So so um when you go and pick up your badge, uh -huh. you have to check. Then we will check your ID. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you put a, a fake name, that's not gonna work. Oh, right. Well, it's not my real name. I just. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I mean. Not a company or anything. Put, right. Oh yeah, for the company, you that's can put a student. Yeah. Actually, okay. actually, um, there's well, they used to. They have a, a expo pass for students. Oh. So search for that. So if you qualify as a student, hey, might as well, because you can get the full conference for like less than half, you know, or okay. more like 75% off or something. So that's another way to get in. Okay. Well, uh, you know, with cool yeah. There you go. Cool. I don't know what includes. The expo pass is just the expo. Oh, okay. That's the, the thing that we were showing earlier. Yeah, that one. It's just this, uh, this one right here. Oh, that one. Yeah. You just get to walk around and do shirt shopping. Mm -hmm. but and you can learn from the vendors. Yeah. It helps you understand the market. Yeah. See, if you if you uh, give a talk, you could throw that in your next interview. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. I mean, yes. The hiring manager will say, "Hey, you're talking yes. that's RSA." Yeah. Yup. Yeah. That's why we're. That's why we're. <laughs> we've been saying that more than just uh -huh. get an expo pass. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because yeah. it helps you career wise. Yeah, and actually, uh, you know, we have a few successful stories from from this group, and actually, I'm one of them. So. When I was starting, just like like him, for example, he gave his first talk. 
I, I gave my, my first talk and, and my manager was in the audience. And, and, and my presentation was my, my interview basically, because he didn't have to, I didn't have to explain him what I did or what I know because I already showed him on the screen, right? For on, on the, on the presentation. And he, he needed a person for that specific presentation. He wanted a person to help him. Um, so um, after the presentation, I, uh, I talked to him for like an hour and I, that was on a Sunday. We used to have them on uh, these meetups on a Sunday and by Friday I was hired. Wow. And I didn't have to go through the HR process and this and that, not even a resume. That was it, I, I was a resume. Okay. I was here, you know, talking. So uh, the places like this, so not just for RSA, but in the future, I know we already have some um, uh, uh, like our schedule book for, for, for this year, but if you have something, you want to have, have like a 15 minute talk just like his, uh, if you're interested, uh, please let, let me know. Uh, you, know, you know, Jonathan here, for example, he uh, uh, it was actually another uh, successful story because, uh, you know, he was working for uh, a vendor, you know, he got laid off and then so he, he's been here since like pretty much uh, all the time in, in Pacific Hackers. So I reached out to one of my former employees, employers, and I said, hey, and I have this guy, you know, he, uh, uh, he's really good at it, you know, you know, uh, can you please give him a chance? And they did. And now, you know, he's after what, five, six months of unemployment. Yeah, five months. Oh. Yeah. So uh, now he's, he's working, right? And uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, we have success stories. <laughs> yeah, we do have success stories for sure, yeah. Uh, and just like, he, like his or mine, you know, there's others as well who actually, it was like more of a word of mouth, you know. And that's with, with the nonprofit organization too, that's what we're trying to accomplish. That companies, instead of going through like, uh, you know, HR or like recruiting places, especially for security, obviously. Uh, they can just come to us and say, hey, do you have not someone who knows application security or web app application uh, pen testing or, or pa packet capture or, or something along the line? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, if you participate in these type of things and you get your points out there, um, we can say, yeah, I remember John, he uh, wasn't one of our CTFs. He understood the concepts. He went up and here you go, here is a proof, you know, and uh, and yeah, we can always recommend you, you know? Uh, and that's, again, well, that's what we're trying to accomplish with the nonprofit, that they can come to us directly instead of uh, using other methods, you know? So, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, a few questions. Yeah, of uh, course. What is your name? I came in late. I think it's oh, Marco. yeah, Marco. Marco, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, the other question is, uh, how many slots are available, or you guys are looking for, for RSA, we have plenty. Okay. So right now we have plenty. Um, it was how to create a, a secure operation center. Wow. So, see. Yeah, a sock. Uh, at the, the time one you I, shoot. Was, <laughs> yeah, I was working at a, 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 a secure operation center. Really? And honestly, my, my talk was the simple stock of uh, everything because I show what a sock was. Um, even, even now, that was like, Sock is uh, here. Here are the uh, the equipment that you need in order to, you know, uh, secure or, or or come up with a sock, and uh, that was it. That was it because uh, my manager wanted me to. Uh, he wanted to create a sock. He, he didn't know even know where to start. I say, well, at least this guy he might not be as. And I, I have to say, at the time I was not as experienced. You know, I was only like probably two years in the industry. I didn't have any really experience other than the current job I was doing. But at least he showed that I wanted to learn and I have uh, familiarity on the topic, like because I was already working in a SOC. So I actually, I created this SOC for the, the company that I work now. Uh, I'm not doing SOC work anymore in-house. I do it more for customers. 
but uh, um, but yeah, I mean, same, same thing. Um, it is three o'clock, and we said that was our stop time. Yeah. So uh, I will stop the recording. Yes. <laughs>